Hey, what's up guys? Just jumping on here to talk to you about the uh, Toast Me KPA MIDI editor that I just discovered. I'm kind of late to the game here. The Toast Me KPA editor uh, I learned about from the Kemper forum here on the Kemper profile user forum. This thread here, KPA editor community project is an old thread, but this like Thursday I ran across some posts where people were talking about great editor, that kind of thing, and so I gave it a shot. I downloaded it, I went to the Facebook group to download the, I joined it, you know, like did a like thing. I downloaded their editor here on this post dated on the 21st. You have um, all this information about donating, of course, uh, which is, you should donate for sure. Um, and then like the Mac and o, uh, and Windows um, executable files that you'll need to download. Once you download, you have to have a special cable, which is a USB to MIDI cable, and what you plug in with the USB MIDI cable is you have an in cable and out cable. You plug the in cable to the output of the Kemper and the out cable to the input of the Kemper on the MIDI, the two MIDI um, slots, right? And then you connect it inside the app. Inside the app here, uh, which is the KPA effects editor, you have to come into MIDI and you go to devices, USB MIDI is what I'm using. I'll link my specific USB MIDI cable, which I picked up off Amazon for like 20 bucks in the description below and then output and USB MIDI. You need to set your channels to channel one for the input and channel one for the output. Then you go into your Kemper into the system, uh, scroll over to the MIDI, and from there you set global communication channels routed to one. With that, you're able to use this standalone editor. This editor doesn't require a DAW. This is a standalone, just like the Helix editor, where it's a standalone program. So this doesn't require anything to run in the background in order to run. All you have to have is a USB MIDI cable and the Kemper itself. I'm using a toaster, as you can see down here in uh, Kemper Cam. And the way this logic of the way this interface is laid out is pretty, pretty straightforward. We have the amp block, which includes the stack and the cab. And from there, you can navigate between your presets, as in like amp models. You can change things like gain, compressor, pick, you know, volume, sagging, tube, shape. You can change all those things right here, and you can turn it on and off, the amp itself. As you can see here in Kempercam, when I turn these things on and off, it has a corresponding function light. So like there's a delay, I'm turning it on and off. So this blue block is like your amp, your stack, and your cap, right? Those are like the three things in the center of your Kemper amp, stack, cab. And you can change your bass, middle, treb, right? You can turn off the EQ that's in between the amp and the cab. And then you can turn off your cab if you wanted to, or you can turn them all on, right? Uh, a, a important setting that's adjustable right on the fly is your pure cabinet, right? So you can instantly see as you load up profiles from like the KPA editor, if there is um, any profile that you load up that has the pure cabinet. I don't like pure cabinet. I don't use pure cabinet. So I, I just, I like how I can instantly see that right there. On the editor, below that amp, uh, EQ, and cab section is the effects section. And that's broken into two parts. One is like dedicated effects, which is stomps A, B, C, D, X, mod, and delay. And then reverb is its own like little sub channel right here on the side. So reverb on and off, effects on and off. Now using this, the effects section of this editor, you have A, B, C, D, you have X mod and delay blocks, which are post amp uh, effects blocks, and you can navigate to them and then change anything that you want them to be, right? So for example, in this preset, I have in my X block, a graphic equalizer. And you can see right there on Kempercam that the X is selected on. If I turn that off, it's now off. I can also turn off the EQ in a stack by using the amp cab stack section. And I've able to turn off the EQ that's in between the amp and the cabinet. So right here, I have direct control without having to touch my Kemper over where I want to put my EQ. If I select the mod, preset button, I can then go in here and change anything. I can make it be anything I want it to be, like quad delay, right? Um, you hear the harmonic?
anything is at my disposal here that is available. This is something, this type of feature is something that was not available in the toaster app, which is something I made a video on when I first got my hands on it. But I'm using the exact same USB to MIDI cable, the exact same camper and the exact same computer. All I've done here is use this new app that is a newer version, version 1.2 by the way, 1.20. And by using this new version, I can pick anything and just about everything a lot easier than turning that single wheel that's on the Kemper editor, right? We all hate that wheel. We all hate having to use that as your only way. And with this like drop down display menu, I can quickly go to anything I want to, right? I don't have to scroll and scroll and scroll. By using the lock feature over here to the right, I can lock what presets and stomps I want to always be on in default. For example, I use my A as my compressor for all of my patches, and I use D as my send and return effects loop that goes to my actual physical pedal board here. So because D is active on my pedal board, I have what I happen to have a whammy ricochet. Yep, and I'm able to change anything I want to. So in C, for example, right here, I have uh, set a green screen and I can change that to be any of the gain pedals, like the one, the DS1 type pedal. I have the gain set a little high, a little aggressive. I just downloaded and started using this app actually this morning, and I'm really excited to see the potential that, of things that I have now at my fingertips. Something that I've always wanted from Kemper since I've had mine is the ability to actually make on-the-fly adjustments without having to lean over and turn that thing. This makes my life a lot easier with my wireless guitar setup, my wireless headphones setup. I can have my Kemper, you know, placed nicely in the house, like on a tabletop or something along those lines, and have a screen and my wireless mouse, my wireless keyboard, and I can sit there on my couch and enjoy playing guitar along with jam tracks and make on the fly adjustments, all the adjustments I would ever want to make without having to ever get up and touch the amp. This is something that you definitely, if you are a Kemper person, should look into because this has all of the changes and all of the settings ability that we've always wanted. I personally don't use rigs because I don't play live, but there's a rig block here, and on this rig block, it looks like it has uh, tap tempo settings, um, pedal locations. On the lock box here that I'm showing you, you can lock your amp, your cab, and your EQ settings to always be stuck the way you want them. So whenever you switch between presets, etc. And then also, I believe with this, you can actually set, because uh, right here in the MIDI settings, there's a controller. And so I am assuming you might be able to send control settings to it. I don't know. All right, guys. So that's been my overview of this really awesome app. It seems to be very powerful and very versatile in, within terms of just the things that I'm going to use it for, which is just here making YouTube videos and just kind of demoing gear. Using the Kemper and this associated app, I can make changes to make my life and my workflow a lot easier when interfacing with the Kemper because, as we all know, Kemper does not have a profile effects editor. This fills the gap nicely with its brand new um, setting. Uh, this is made by Damien Greta and it's version 1.20 and the date of this build is March 30th. So it's important to stress that when you go to the Facebook group that you make sure you download the latest version of this and um, you know use your WinZip to extract it and then make sure you're USB cable is set up correctly. If you have any questions using this with your USB MIDI cable, shoot me a comment down below and ask me or maybe someone else in the comments can give us some tips. Like I said before, make sure your output cable is mapped to your input of your Kemper and your input cable is mapped to the output of your Kemper. When you got that set up, you should be able to use this pretty well. Alright guys, that's been this video. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with us and uh, rock on. I'll catch you guys later.